Hey everyone! In this tutorial I'll show you how to create a reusable component with Jet Engine and towards the end of this video how to use components inside a Bricks Builder query loop. In many cases when you're building a website this can save you a ton of time. First off, what is a component in Jet Engine? It's a reusable template you can partly pre-configure and then adjust when using it. Like listings, components can include static and dynamic content and be used inside listings or single templates. But unlike listings, they don't need to live in a loop. That makes them perfect for buttons, headers, CTAs, pop-ups, anything you'd otherwise repeat or rebuild. Now let me show you how to create a reusable component in Elementor that works on both dynamic templates like medical service singles and static pages like a home page. Head over to your WordPress dashboard, go to Jet Engine, Listings Components and click Add New Component. Give your component a name and select Elementor as the editor in the Component View dropdown. Honestly, Elementor offers the quickest way to build components and you'll see why when we compare it to Briggs process a bit later. In this case, we'll create a call to action block for medical services that will include several elements that you can customize when inserting it into different places across the site. Once we are in the editor, the first thing we'll do is define component controls. Think of these as tags that you'll be able to assign to specific parts of your component so you can change their content later. Click icon to open the component settings tab. Then open the Component Content Controls section. This is where you'll see a list of the controls you've added, and you'll notice the first control is already created by default. Click on the Text Control label and expand its settings. Here you can change the control label, let's call this one CTA Title. This label is just for your own reference when you're editing the component later on. Next, set the control name following the required format rules. This acts like a shortcode that links components' controls to its actual elements. Then choose the control type. In this case, we'll keep it as text, since we want to enter a single line title here later on. Let's go over the rest of the control types quickly. Text area is for multi-line plain text like a short description or intro. Rich text is same as text area, but with formatting options like bold, italics, links, lists and more. Select lets you create a drop-down menu with predefined options to choose from. Single media is for uploading or choosing a media file from the media library or pointing to its dynamic source. And finally there's a default value setting. This is where you can add placeholder content that will show up if no value hasn't been entered yet. Let's create a description field labeled CTA text. This time choose text area to add a longer message. Next I'm adding a control for an image. I will label it CTA image and set the control type to single media. I also plan to have a button inside the CTA and it will have two adjustable parts, the button label and the URL it links to. So let's create a new control and label it button text. Set the control type to select. That gives us a field where we can add one option per line. In my case, I'll input two options. One for when I want the button to lead to an appointment form page and another for when it directs users to a full list of medical services. Then for the button link, I'll create a separate control with the text control type. We'll get back to the next section in component settings, which is component style controls a bit later. Right now, let's add the needed elements into our CDA and link them to the controls. Basically, we can connect component controls to all widgets that support dynamic content. Just click the dynamic tag icon next to the relevant field. So for example, for our text content, we can either use a dynamic field widget and style it manually or go with heading or text editor widgets, which pull in our theme's default styling. Let's go with the heading widget first. Click the dynamic tags icon next to the title input field and from the list of dynamic sources under Jet Engine choose component control value. Here type in the control name, the first one we created, CTA title. We should already see the default value show up. For this title I'm going to set the HTML tag to H3. Next comes the text editor widget.
Same idea here, set the content source to component control value and enter the control name, CTA text. Now I'm creating a button using Jet Engine's dynamic link widget styled as a button. For the link source choose component control value and input the control name, button link. And for the button label, again select component control value as the source and use button text as the name. Time to add the image control. We are not inserting a separate image widget here, instead go to the CDA container style settings, set the background type to image and choose dynamic source, component control image. Enter the control name, CTA image. I'm also going to move all the textual CTA elements to the left half of the container and tweak the container's borders and padding to polish the layout. Let's move on to style controls now. Every Elementor widget we've used, including the container and all textual elements, comes with color options. Text color, background overlay, button color, borders, and so on. We can preset these styles inside the component once and for all, or give users the ability to adjust them later, either individually or in groups. Here's how to do that. Go back to component settings and open the component style controls section. Click add item to create your first style control. Set the label and control name to text color and pick default color. Now repeat that process and create three more style controls. Two for the background overlay color because I'm going to add a background overlay set to gradient. Something with more opacity on the left side and more transparency on the right. All the text will sit on the left half of the container so the image doesn't distract from it. And another style control for the button color. Now we can assign these three color controls to anywhere color is defined. Let's go to the heading style settings, open up the color picker for text and hit the dynamic text icon. Here choose component control color as the source and insert the control name, text color. Assign the same style control to the element with CTA description. Go to the dynamic link widget style options, hit the color picker and connect to the button color style control the same way. Finally open the options for styling the container's background overlay and assign both gradient colors the overlay color controls using dynamic tags. That's it for the component creation. Now let's see how quickly we can drop it onto a home page with some static info and then reuse the same component on a single page template with dynamic sources and adjusted styling. On the home page, I just start by typing the component's name into the widget search bar. Once it shows up, I drag it onto the page. Now when I open the component's content settings, I see a list of all our pre-built content and style controls. Above the content controls, there's an option to set the component context. In most cases, we leave it as default object, but I'll show you when to change that later, during the bricks component creation part. Since this is just a one-time static instance on a regular page, I just fill in exactly what I want, the heading, description, the link, right into the input fields provided by our content controls. For the button label, you can see that I can select between two options here. Same for the image, I just pick one from the media library. Then I can tweak the colors using the style controls, text color, button color, overlay, gradient, or just leave them on default. And that's it, we can now check the final look on the front end. Now let's head over to the single service template and drop in the same component there. Once again, the component content settings show the same fields we defined earlier, content and style controls. But here most of the content should be dynamic, because this one component will be used across all individual service pages, pulling in the right info for each one. We're still keeping the component context set to default object. For the CTA title, instead of entering manual tags, we click the dynamic tag icon and choose current object field. 
Then from the drop-down we select Post Title. This pulls the name of the current service. We also expand the advanced options and add some default tags before and after the title to turn it into a complete CTA title. For the CTA text, we open the dynamic text again, but this time choose Jet Engine Custom Field and link it to the field that stores a brief description for the service. As for the button, we set the label to make an appointment using a selector and insert the link to the appointment form page. The image also needs to be dynamic, so again we click the dynamic tag button, select Jet Engine custom image and then choose post thumbnail to display the featured image of the current service. You can tune the colors of the text, overlay and button just like before. Now if we check the result on the front end, each single service page displays the correct content using the same layout and structure as our basic component but with colors that differentiate it from the homepage CTA. Now I'll show you how to create a component in Bricks and use it in a query loop to display a list of doctors. Each item will include dynamic info about the service that doctor provides. Services and doctors are already set up as related post types. With the Bricks theme activated, let's head over to Jet Engine, Listings, Components and create a new component. Give it a name, set the component view to Bricks and click Create Component. As I mentioned earlier, creating components in Bricks works a bit differently than in Elementor. After creating the component, you won't be able to set up content and style controls directly in the Bricks editor. Instead, return to the list of components, hover over the one you just created and click the Edit Component Settings button. This will open a pop-up where you can define content and style controls. For this example, I'll create just two content controls. Click New Control and set the label for the first one to Service Title. Leave the control type as text. Then add a second control with the label Service Description and choose the Text Area control type. Save the settings and go back into the Bricks editor. Inside the editor, I'll add two elements to display the title and description. First, drop in a heading element. In the content settings, click the dynamic data icon next to the input field. In the list of dynamic sources, find the label of the component we just created and under that select the service title control. Next, add a basic text element. Again, hit the dynamic data icon and this time select the service description control. You won't see default values in the editor, but if you view the component on the front end, it'll be there. Now let's build a page in the Bricks editor. Start with the usual section and container layout. In the container's content settings, activate the query loop toggle. This allows you to display repeating content such as data from custom post types. Click the infinity icon next to the query label to expand the basic settings for querying data. From the type options, choose Jet Engine Query Builder and then choose Doctor's Query from previously created query options. Now insert a dynamic field element. As long as it's placed inside the container with the query loop activated, Bricks will dynamically display multiple doctor names, because by default the dynamic field pulls data from the post title, and each displayed title represents a separate instance of the container, repeated once for every doctor post found in the query. So when I add another dynamic element, this time a dynamic image, and set its source to the doctor's custom field that contains each doctor's portrait, the images will appear right next to each doctor's name. Just like with the previous two elements, we'll also insert a component inside the container. For now, the component displays the default information that we entered when setting up the component controls. Let's go to the component's content settings where you'll see the list of available component controls. First of all, we need to change the default object context of the component. 
This time the component should show information from the services related to each doctor and not data from the displayed post itself. Since such a relation actually exists, the correct context here is related items from services to doctors. Now for the service title control, choose the service title custom field from services. And for the service description, select the corresponding description field. If everything is set up correctly, you should see the appropriate information appear in the editor right away. Now you can proceed with styling each element and the container, which acts like an individual listing. If you want to display these listings in columns, go to the section that contains the container and make sure its display setting is set to flex. Then set flex wrap to wrap, choose the direction to be row and adjust the container's width as needed to fit multiple items per row. As you can see, Bricks offers a streamlined flexible grid setup and full integration with Jet Engine's custom post types, meta fields and components making it smooth to display dynamic data. Jet Engine's components are a powerful tool for building reusable templates with just the right level of customization. Whether you're streamlining your own workflow or creating flexible, client-friendly websites. Hope you found the walkthrough and my examples useful. If you did, feel free to drop a comment below, give the video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one.